All right, everyone. So at this point, we've made chocolate chip cookie product, which has these three variations. We'll do something similar again to get more practice with variations because these could be very valuable for you. So let's say we're going to create another kind of cookie. Notice we have, if you're on visit site, uh, you also have very quickly shortcut at the top new product. So that new button at the top, if it's available to you, often has the ability to quickly create a new post or page or product in this case. So however you're going to do it, let's create a new product. This one will be um, what's that? Let's do peanut butter cookie. Peanut butter is that two words? Peanut butter cookie. Peanut butter cookie. So this one will also uh, need to be put into my cookies category. So I'll just write something quickly under. Um, Description, we'll just write organic peanut and put it into the category of cookies. Notice I'm skipping tags and, and the picture. We've done that before. And then the big idea is variations. We're going to use the same variant set, batch size. I want to use all three variations or variants, so I'll select the parent element, and all three should get selected. So since I've already created this sort of template of dozen, half dozen, and one and two dozen, I just use it again. Do you see why I didn't call it originally cookie, you know, cookie batch? or chocolate chip cookie batch. I called it something generic, which then I can reuse. Generate variations. Once you generate the variations, then you get the, the screen where you see everything at once. I'm going to say for peanut butter, different prices. I'm going to say that my half dozen is four fifty. My one dozen is $10. My two dozen is twenty-two fifty, so a little bit cheaper than the chocolate chip version. I can easily do that. You see, we created the variant set and the variations, <clears throat> and uh, added base prices. But whenever I want, I can change these prices. I'll save those variations. I can even get so fancy, just for practice. I'll say that under the sale price. I'll say that under the sale price, actually, I'll leave it as 1050 price, but then sale price 10, just to see what that looks like. So again, enticing people. Oh, sale, even though it's only 50 cents. Let me buy more to save more. <clears throat> so you want to save that and then publish the product. and then visit site. So I'll go to the shop, I'll go to cookies, chocolate chip cookie, peanut butter cookie, there's my description, product options, price from 450, so it, it gives the lowest price starting from 450. Um, batch size, select there, half dozen, one dozen, two dozen, so it's not obvious within the drop-down that there's a sale. that would be nice if it was, but half dozen, then it says 450, one dozen, old price 1050, price 10. You save 50 cents, which is 4.76 percent. So that could entice people. And then two dozen is that price. So maybe on all three of them, I could have added uh, current price and old, or old price and new price, uh, just to entice people more to buy them because they're a little more affordable. So 
So did that work for everyone? Just choose any places. Also, what you missed there was we needed to add, so it goes back a few times to get back to the theme. We needed to add a category, and that's why it's not showing up on the screen. Okay. Right, so I went to the product category, and then the product category, and we need to also add a number of columns to it. Thank you. 
All right, everyone, so if you got the peanut butter cookie to work, then now you've got uh, these new items that are variations. Let's do one more kind of cookie and use one more variation, but we'll change it up again a little bit more just to see that we can. So we'll go back to new product. This time we'll do my favorite cookie, which is the snickerdoodle. If you've never had a snickerdoodle, it's like a sugar cookie, but better. So, snickerdoodle, and whatever description you want. So sugary and so good. Remember to put it into your cookies category. If, you're, if your cookies are not displaying on your screen, it's probably because you haven't added them to the cookies category. And um, I'm keeping it on product, category, and cookies so that I can see them either or. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the usual. Here's my, here's my different thing. I'm not going to select to add all three variations. I'm going to um, only sell these in groups of one dozen and two dozen. So notice there, I've checked on one dozen and two dozen. generate variations like before, and now we've only got one dozen and two dozen. Now, the other variation is, uh, instead of ha adding a value, 10, 50, 23, in, in, in monetary units, I'm going to add them in, uh, in percent, because... Uh, the base price that these variations have is 10, 50, and 23. But what if I want to make these a little bit more expensive? So let's say I put in here 5% and 6%, which might not actually work. Sorry about that. I'm thinking about it in different terms. No, it won't work here. It's going to work in terms of the when we created the variation. This doesn't take percentage. Hmm. It has to be a value. Okay. Well, let's say then the one dozen um, is twelve twenty-five, 
and the two dozen is 2450. So I'm going to save that and publish and visit site. Remember to save and then publish and visit site. Yes. Product tags would be, uh, let's say, um, this is a chocolate chip cookie. It would have been actually a good idea to add the category of chocolate mm -hmm. to it, because I had chocolate cake, chocolate chip cookie, etc. Those two are clearly different product categories, but they're still linked together via a tag. If I go to cookies, I've got a brand new product, Snickerdoodle, two variations, one dozen, two dozen, and their price. So easy. I could create a parent variety with a bunch of sub varieties, but I don't need to use them all always. I can change the price however I want per product as well. Let's create a completely different type of product and see how we can use our existing. Well, actually, either or. Let's um, let's create a new variation and see how we can use that. So we'll go back to creating variations. Let's go to dashboard. Products and variations. So we'll go back to variations so that we can create a new This one's going to be uh, for our, our cakes and pies. Our cakes and pies are, are defined by, uh, by the circumference. And also, maybe to get fancy for pies, we could do also, or for cakes, we could do layers. Single layer cake, double layer cake, triple layer cake. So let's see how we can, we can work with that. That's going to require two parent variations, uh, size. And layers. So here under, on the left side, be careful here, we're creating a brand new parent set, a new variation set. So let's call that size. We'll start with size. Make sure it's not a child of anything. It says new variation set. We'll do size. Set a base price. We'll say the base price of our pies are going to be starting at $10. Oh, this is where I was thinking about percentage and such. Do it here. Although it doesn't quite make sense to me. Why would we add it here if I want to add it to individual products? But anyway, let's add the new variation. And now we've got, notice it's not indented like these others. It's out on the same level as batch size. So this will be size of pie or cake. Next, we will add a new variation with a parent of size. So now make sure it says size. And then we'll say, we're going to sell pies in sizes of either 10 or 12 inches. So we'll say 10 dash inch. Our 10 inch pies will be $10. So 
And now size has a child of 10 inch. Let's add another one, make sure it's also in size, and we will add 12 inch. So size is 12 inch and 10 inch. Everyone's had those. Oh, I forgot to give a price, didn't I? No problem. You can go back to edit 12 inch. And uh, price, we'll say for 12 inches, also $12. So, so now we have. So now we have that. Uh, we have that grouping size, ten and twelve inch. Let's make another grouping. We'll call this one layers. Be careful here. Make sure it says parent new variation set. If it's still set to size, that's going to cause problems. Make sure your parent set is new variation set. This will be layers. Base price. Um, I'm going to follow along um, on my sizes. I'm going to start off with a $10 base price. So now I've got a new parent set of layers. And I will add uh, one layer, two layer, three layer. Before that, make sure that the parent is set to layers one layer. One layer, we'll say ten dollars. These can be refined of course and they most likely will need to be. I haven't exactly thought about how these prices would make sense. I'm thinking about them in terms of what my variations are. Then we'll figure out prices, but I'm setting some base prices and then I'm going to add another one. It's parent layers. And this time we'll go with two layer. Price will be $12. And finally, I'll do three layer. Sure of these prices, just making them up. Fourteen dollars. Layers one, two, and three, and size uh, ten and twelve. Yeah, that's, that's coming up next, because then now we need to attach these to an actual cake, and then we'll figure out the prices. Okay, so uh, I'm going to create a new product. So let's say um, product new. kind of cakes I have right now are anniversary cake and birthday cake. Uh, let's say congratulations cake. This is our new product here, congratulations cake. Make sure it's in the products category and cakes category. I'll figure out some text a little later. Tag. Again, I, I would use tags. Let's say I was selling vanilla cookies. Vanilla cake pops, vanilla cakes. Then if I attach vanilla there, all th those are three different kinds of products, but they're all linked together via that tag. So when someone searches the tag vanilla, they could find those three kinds of products. 
so I'm not worried about tags at the moment. We have a title, we have a description, categories. Now let's look here. Variations, setup. And notice we can select as many as we want. So I'm going to select to activate layers, all three layers, and size, all two sizes. What's that? We're doing it as a new product first. Then we can go back and add it to an old one. I think it's better to think about it in new terms than editing an old one. Generate variations. Remember to click that. And then so what I get is um, these six items. I get a one layer 10 inch, a one layer 12 inch. I get a two layer 10 inch, a two layer 12 inch, a three layer 10 inch, and a three layer 12 inch, so six. So now I've got six products to work with. All the base products come in here. Is what I'm saying about I've dealt with this client that had so many variations that honestly it did end up to hundreds of variations in the total of their various products. And yes, it then took a long time. Two of us working at once, logged in separate accounts, editing the prices individually. There are other uh, plugins. The WooCommerce plugin, I think, works better with variations. That one it seems that we're able to edit, we're, we're able to do batch editing. Either we can select several products at once, so let me confirm this, select several products at once to edit at once. Bulk actions, edit, hmm. Let me just explore that. What if I select those two, edit, Variant shipping editor, product will not be shipped, weight dimensions. I don't want to deal with shipping, I want to deal with their prices. Oh, I suppose that is doable there. Perhaps in since we have since we've used this plugin for a few years. And it didn't. It wasn't able to do it before. This might seem really good, actually. It looks like we can select more than one product at a time and change their prices together. Once we click the drop-down list of edit. In our case, I think that's going to be a big time saver. Uh, that is, in my company's case, for us here learning this, you can do it either or. But I'm going to do it the the the, the long way first. I could go in and I can individually edit each of these prices. I have six to work with. I've got $10, $12, $14. And in the groups of three layers, 12 inch, three layers, 10 inch, etc. They're kind of out of order. But the point is I can go in and, and edit them however I want. So even though I, in all my classes I'm always talking about Victor's Bakery this and Victor's Bakery that, I don't have a bakery. Uh, I like to cook and bake, but I don't have a bakery, and I have no real idea how much these things cost. So if uh, I wanted to change these prices, we could. I just add a dollar or two just to play with it. But this is the point that I can be as complex as I want. If I'm selling things in combos, if I'm selling them in variations like this, and I have the ability to really refine them. Question? This is my team room. Can you organize the, the order in which they're listed? I ended up doing the word single layer and then doing the two layers, so it's made it that it's actually hard for the consumer to pick out, so say 12 inch. Yes. Comma two layer and then two layer comma six inch. 
It's probably because it usually goes in alphabetical order, right? I think it does it in the order that we add it, perhaps. But let me confirm because it that is always a, a thing, and I and I forget. I believe we do it. Yes, we do it right here. It doesn't quite. It's not quite obvious, but we do it in the actual variations. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the variations. And uh, it's not obvious at all, but if you drag the whole row, if I click here and drag it, then it'll drag it up here. If you, if you need to rearrange any of these, you have to go back to the variations and then drag. Oftentimes there's some sort of little marker that you click and drag that doesn't have it. So if you need to rearrange these in any order, just click anywhere in the row, the empty row, and drag up and down however they need to go. Let me let me see. Mm -hmm. I probably would need to do it in here, right? Because if I go to um the room chat it won't work for us. Um should we just before go ahead and edit the product you were just editing. Okay. So the product was um Okay. Um, anyway, so it was saying like the one cake would be the diameter first and then the layers, and then the next product would be the layers first and the diameters. So could we only go in and actually manually change that layer? I think so. That name that appears attached to that product, we would have to go in and edit the title of that product. Okay. At that point, it's not quite thinking about it anymore in terms of separate variations. It's just putting the name of the product. So okay. we can edit the title and we can write what we want. Okay. No, it's not going to take any skill. Thank you. 
to publish it. It's still in the state of the thing of the eight and the eights, which are the numbers. Yeah. And then we're going to add it under the category as well. So it is an eight and one part of it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're doing this behind the scenes. What was the So that's a good point. That is one quirk that these names here, if I go back to my products and I created that congratulations cake, when I edit it, what will appear, these are the names that could appear, which for some reason it flips it around. The reason is because um, it's a computer and it's dumb. And the reason it's dumb is because it's very literal. It sees the number one, the number one, the number one, the number one. Not necessarily the number 10 or the number one. It just sees one. So in my case, it saw that uh, one layer, and then it put it first, and then 12. And so if this isn't exactly how you want it to show up on screen, you are able to hover over and then click Edit. And that will take you to that particular variation of that particular product and then you can further edit that however you want. Usually the way it does it for you should work depending on your variations and such. But in my case I'm going to, um, if I wanted to, I could go in and make a change and then click publish to change it. Before I do that I want to confirm that it's looking how I expect so here I was just going in and adding a couple of extra prices. I've got one layer 10 inch and one layer 12 inch. Well, actually I wanted $12 for the 12 inch, and then we've got 10 inch, two layer, $12, 10 inch, three layer, 14, that's good, 12 inch, two layer. Again, if the prices make sense to you, go ahead and change them. If not, you don't have to. But, uh, if you make any changes, save the variations and then publish. And if you visit site, and I go to cakes, I've got a third cake, and notice the difference here. You have the two variations, layers and size. Please select each, starting from $10. So if I were to select one layer, it still says, okay, you still need to select the other half of that, which would be 10 inch, $10. One layer, 12 inch, $12. But what if I want to get fancy? I'll go 10 inch, three layers, $14. Three layers, 12 inch, also 14. So I would go back and, and edit those prices, but that's the point here. I can add as many variations as I want, and we've got layers and size. If I wanted size first and then layers, that is not that easy to do. I would have to edit the code to change the order of that. I think it's based alphabetically, because there's L, then there's S. So I suppose I can cheat by naming these things with a number first. If I name size, if I if I put one, 
dot size and two dot layers, I think then it'll put size first and layers second. You'll have it showing the numbers. So again, the point is that unless there is a button or some sort of method or drop down menu of your plugin or your theme or whatever to make a change, you won't be able to make a change easily. But there's always a way to change anything in WordPress, and that's going to require editing the code. And if you're not familiar with that, that could seem impossible. So you'll, you might have to stick with what the theme authors or plugin authors provide you. So you can keep experimenting with uh, the variations. That can be pretty complex. We've covered a lot uh, so far. What we're going to do is change gears to talk about a little bit more advanced editing of the store. There's various like rough around the edges things that I'd like to change. Like I'm tired of it showing proudly powered by WordPress at the bottom. I wanted to say something else like my uh, my own copyright notice for example what i'd also like to do is if i'm if i'm in the shop and i add anniversary cake to my cart and then i go to check out for example what i don't like is this screen perhaps is a little bit cramped you know my text might be cutting off oddly, quantity, that sort of thing. I want to see if I can edit some of that. That's going to require a little bit of looking at the code, both editing down here at the bottom and editing some of the rough around the edge stuff like, why is there such a big space between last name and then this stuff here? Can't I kind of tighten that up perhaps? We should be able to, but it'll require some code. And at the time that we have here, you're not going to become a code editing guru at all. But you're going to look at what can you do to get you on the path to editing parts of the site that perhaps at first weren't accessible to you. Because there was no button for me simply to click Make Text Smaller. And so if you take some of our many other classes on HTML at this campus, you should be better at it. And I do teach a class on HTML. But uh, we're going to change gears for that. Any questions before we change gears? Change tracks.